Chapter 23, Allergic Reaction. Topics covered. Allergic reactions, self-administered epinephrine, EMT-administered epinephrine. How it relates to the pathophysiology of anaphylaxis to previous lessons on shock and respiratory problems. We're going to discuss how the signs and symptoms may be similar. What are allergic reactions? An allergic reaction is a body's exaggerated immune response to a foreign invader. Think of it like your immune system is at a level 10 and has gone warp 10. It is beyond anything um, the body should be doing for its, its immune system. Not all allergic reactions results in anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock is a severe life-threatening allergic reaction. The person becomes shocky when their blood vessels dilate rapidly, causing this, blood, um, this drop in blood pressure or hypotension. The cells leak fluid into the interstitial place, so they have the lack of fluid as well as the blood vessels have dilated. The tissues swell, including their airways. Anaphylaxis is severe and systemic form an allergic reaction and should be considered a life-threatening emergency. Consider how an allergic reaction is different from other anaphylactic reactions. What do you know from movies, television, books, and from experiences on how the difference is in allergic reaction versus anaphylaxis. There are, there are many different causes for allergic reactions. There may be insects, which there is different types of insects that can cause allergic reaction. With many hornets and bees and even wasps, a lot of times they have a hollow spine that will continue to inject the toxin into whatever they've stung. Some of them, the stinger will be left behind and the insect will die later. Some of them can continue to bite or sting over and over. If you do see the stinger in place, it must be removed. One of the complications and problems with using tweezers to remove a stinger is that it may break off the end that you can see and the remainder of it remains in the skin. As long as the stinger is still in the body, it can still be injecting the the venom into the skin. Using a credit card to kind of scratch it from the surface is the best way to remove the stinger from the skin. Many foods cause allergic reaction. Sometimes an allergic reaction doesn't take place until 15, 20, even 30 minutes after the person eats it. As long as they are still digesting, it can continue to make them have an allergic reaction. So consider how long their allergic reaction may sit and how long it is going to be to transport them to a hospital or clinic. Many plants cause allergic reactions. Many of them are mild and include seasonal allergies. Many medications have long periods that they are given. If you have a low dose versus a high dose, or if you have an extended um, release medication, it could change how long that they have an allergic reaction for. You have a medication that's supposed to give the dose over 12 hours, they may be at risk for an allergic reaction for over 12 hours as their body breaks down the medication. So consider that when you are looking at how long you have to transport a patient and how much medication you have for them. Other allergic reactions could be animals, dust, chemicals, soap, makeup. Many people are allergic to the saliva in animals as opposed to just their dander. Think about friends or family members or even yourself that have different allergic reactions to things. Think about the different plants, medications, foods, and other substances that you may be allergic to. 
Although it is not as common as it has been in the past, latex is a particular concern in EMS. Many patients have a latex sensitivity, and patients that have had multiple surgeries have an increased likelihood to have this allergy. The more they're exposed to it, the more chance they have to develop this allergy. EMS and medical providers wearing gloves are more likely to develop the allergy. Providers can also develop latex allergy from the prolonged exposure. Normally, an allergic reaction does not occur the first time a person encounters an allergen. On the first exposure, the immune system forms these antibodies. The second time they're exposed, these antibodies combine with the allergen. When the antibodies combine with the allergen, this combination causes the release of histamines and leukotrienes. These substances lead to a spectrum of reactions. So the antibodies combine with the allergen. This confuses the body's immune response. It sees the allergen and it starts to fight it using the antibodies, but the antibodies are not attacking the allergen. The antibodies are actually attacking each other. Dilation of blood vessels reduces the amount of blood returned to the heart. The pump is still working, the heart is still working, and there's still fluid running around, but the actual piping gets bigger and makes them shocky. Flushing of the skin as blood vessels near the surface open up, so the person may have red in the face, but they are unconscious and responsive. Fluid moves into the different tissues out of the cells, which develops angioedema. Um, anytime fluid leaves the cell and goes into the interstitial fluid, you're going to get some sort of swelling or edema. When it's around the tongue and face, you get the angioedema, and then swelling around the vocal cords, which will cause an airway blockage and strider. Some of the other reactions can be uticaria, which is hives on the skin, bronchoconstriction that decreases the air movement in the lungs. This bronchoconstriction causes wheezes. As the bronchioles down near the bottom of the, the lungs where the alveola is starts to get tinier and tinier, air is unable to pass through as easily, and a slight whistling, whistling sound in each of those bronchioles is then heard which is interpreted as wheezes. They also may develop thick mucus in the lungs, so then it can get thick and wheezy. Allergic reactions are very unpredictable. We never know how a person's going to react to a specific allergen or how they're going to react to the allergen today versus yesterday or the previous time that they've reacted. A severe reaction may be immediate, but can be delayed 30 minutes or more. In most cases, the 30 minute mark determines whether it is a mild allergic reaction or a severe allergic reaction. Either one of these, severe or mild, can rapidly progress into anaphylaxis. We always need to consider monitoring the patient until we get them to their destination or to another provider. We never know how fast this allergic reaction will progress with this allergen. Some of the signs you may see with an allergic reaction is itching, hives, flushing, swelling in the face, neck, hands, feet, or tongue, warm tingling feeling of the face, mouth, chest, feet, or hands, Signs of an allergic reaction may include facial swelling. You can see there where he's got some redness to his face. He's got some swelling around his eyes. Doesn't appear very comfortable. Hives, also known as uticaria, can be localized, especially around the area of the bite or sting. Or it can be generalized, presenting over entire areas of the body. There is a difference between hives and wheels, W-H-E-A-L. Hives are red, 
usually itchy, burny, they can spread, be generalized or localized. Wheels are usually round, hardened, that can be blanched. Blanched means you can push down with your thumb or finger and squeeze out the blood so it turns white and then the blood will return back to it. Additional signs and symptoms is tightness in the throat or chest, coughing, it could be productive or non-productive. They may be have rapid, labored, or noisy breathing. They may have a muffled, hoarse, or loss of voice, and they could develop a strider. With wheezing, you can actually hear some wheezing from across the room without a stethoscope. Some people will actually not have any noises in their lungs at all. This does not mean that they have clear lung sounds. They could be so tight, their bronchioles could be so tight that they're not getting air in and out, and they will not even have wheezes. After they are given medications, these airways may open up and you'll start to hear wheezes. Some can consider you hear it the first time and there's no wheezes, you give the medication, then you listen again and now they've developed wheezes. It does not mean that they're getting worse. It actually means that they're getting better, that they're actually able to even make wheezes now. They'll develop anxiety as well as this dropped blood pressure is going to make their heart increase. Although their heart is increasing, they will still have a decrease in blood pressure. Generalized findings, they may have itchy watery eyes, headache, runny nose, and a sense of impending doom. You must take the sense of impending doom very seriously. Signs and symptoms of shock, you're going to see this in other symptoms of shock. Altered mental status is the big key. Flushed, it could be dry or pale, cool clammy skin, so changes in skin color, temperature, and moisture. They may have nausea and vomiting, especially if there is GI upset from their allergen, and they'll have changes in their vital signs. Could be changes in their pulse and respirations, and a decrease in blood pressure. So how, did, how do we distinguish the difference between anaphylaxis and a simple allergic reaction? Any of the previous signs and symptoms can be associated with an allergic reaction. Between hives and a hoarse throat, maybe itchiness, burning eyes, nausea, vomiting. To be anaphylaxis, the patient must either have respiratory distress or signs and symptoms of shock. Be aware, however, allergies can rapidly progress into anaphylaxis. As with any of our patients, we're going to perform a primary assessment and care for any immediate life threats. Airway breathing and circulation take precedence over anything else. If they have an immediate threat to their airway or angioedema to their, their airway, that needs to be dealt with before we do any of the other assessment or history. During the secondary assessment, Ask about history of allergies. How were they exposed to it? What were they exposed to? What is their normal reaction to this exposure? Have they been intubated or hospitalized with this allergen before? What are their signs and symptoms? How has it progressed? Has it gotten worse rapidly? Has it slowly progressed? Has it gone from localized to more systemic or generalized? And what interventions have they done? Have they taken their own EpiPen? Have they tried taking Benadryl? Are there other things that they may have attempted? Suspect an allergic reaction any time a patient has come in contact with a substance that has caused a reaction in the past. Also consider an allergic reaction if there's itching hives or any difficulty breathing. Difficulty breathing can manifest from many different um, causes, but always have an allergic reaction in the back of your mind. Anytime a patient shows any signs or symptoms of shock, consider that they may have an allergic reaction. Regardless of what you're called out to, it's also a consideration to take in. So you have to decide, is this an allergic reaction or anaphylaxis? Does this have the potential to become anaphylaxis? Do I need to administer an, an, epi, an epinephrine autoinjector? If the patient develops or has altered mental status, open and maintain the airway. If the patient is not breathing, adequately provide artificial ventilation via a BVM. 
So what are some of the indications for epinephrine? First, we must consider how epinephrine works. Epinephrine works by constricting blood vessels and opening up bronchioles. It is a bronchodilator and vasoconstrictor. It also works in increasing the heart rate, which is not necessarily what we want for an allergic reaction. An allergic reaction, if you recall, the blood vessels dilate and drop blood pressure. The, the bronchioles constrict and block airways. So what we need is something to constrict the blood vessels to bring the blood pressure back up and a bronchodilator to open up the airways. Epinephrine does not get rid of the allergen. What it does is it reverses the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction. Indications would be somebody that has that drop in blood pressure from vasodilation or person that has bronchoconstriction affecting their airway. So if they have respiratory distress with the signs and symptoms of shock or they have wheezing, possibly not even wheezing, but they're showing signs of respiratory distress and shock or they complain of respiratory distress and show signs of shock, but they do not have an auto injector available. Since the allergic reaction may continue once the epinephrine has worn off, because again, it does not reverse the allergic reaction, it merely reverses the signs and symptoms of the allergic reaction while the medication takes effect. You must record the administration of this epinephrine, transport the patient, and then reassess every two minutes. The allergic reaction may return and actually become worse. So be prepared to give an an additional dose of the epinephrine. If the patient meets the criteria for epinephrine, but you cannot carry and use it, call for an ALS intercept. Should you administer an auto injector for a simple allergic reaction? What assessment findings would indicate the need for the epinephrine for the anaphylaxis versus an allergic reaction. Epinephrine is a very potent drug with, with potential complications. As said before, even though it reverses the vasodilation and the bronchoconstriction, it also increases the heart rate. This can put potential people with cardiac involvement, cardiac risk, hypertension, or um, the elderly at risk for heart attacks. Do not give epinephrine for a simple allergic reaction. There may be better drugs for their signs and symptoms with their allergic reaction. Epinephrine auto injectors or EpiPens can be used by the patient or assisted by the EMT in cases of anaphylaxis. Epinephrine is a natural hormone produced by the body and it works on the sympathetic system, increasing the heart rate, constricting blood vessels, and dilating the bronchioles. Inside the EpiPen is a spring-loaded needle and a syringe with a single dose of epinephrine that will automatically release and inject the medication. People with severe allergies commonly carry these devices to deploy in the event of an anaphylactic reaction. They may keep them in their purse, the glove box of their car, their pocket, their backpack. So you may be having to dig through somebody's purse looking for the EpiPen. If you're unable to communicate with your patient, asking them a yes or no question about the use of an EpiPen and whether they have one may be the, the means of getting that information from them. So do you have an allergy? Yes. Do you have an EpiPen? Yes. Can you point to it? And then they can kind of show you where to go to find their EpiPen. You may find bracelets or necklaces or even look on some people's phones. Some people will put um, 
an ICE or the in case of emergency contact and they may put their medical history on their phones. iPhone currently has an area where you don't even have to unlock the phone to see a medication list of the owner of the phone. In many states, EMT can administer epinephrine for a prescribed patient. So if the patient has the medication prescribed to them, the EMT can help administer it. Other states do not allow this unless they have medical direction, or they may be allowed to give it if it's not prescribed to them. They may have some on their truck or carried in a jump kit. Refer to any of your medical protocols and follow online and offline medical direction. As with any medication, you need to check your rights. Also check the expiration date. You need to make sure that the liquid is clear if you can see it. You're going to remove the cap and press the injector firmly against the outer thigh. If you reach down on your side, put your hand straight down so you adduct to your body, put your hand down to your thigh, you're going to meet essentially where you're going to put that on them. So if you put their hand down to their side, down to their thigh, that is where you're going to place the EpiPen. You do not want to put your thumb on the end of it. If your EpiPen is shaped like this, and this is the needle, and this is the cap back here, if you put your thumb on it, right here, and this is your thumb to help you push it in. If you accidentally get your epinephrine pen backwards, you will inject the entire epinephrine into your thumb. It does take about 10 seconds to get the entire medication out, but your thumb is pretty small and it's going to vasoconstrict, which is going to constrict all of the blood vessels in your thumb and you will potentially lose your thumb. It will have to be amputated. So make sure when you do grab it, you just grab it solid. So you don't put your thumb here. Instead, you wrap your thumb around it to the other side to keep yourself from poking it. Allergic reaction may be very intense and stressful. So always practicing it in this manner will protect you from when there is total chaos and you're feeling overwhelmed. Although it has been stated numerous times, it can never be stated too much. Epinephrine is used for true anaphylactic reactions. It is a pretty intense medication that can cause serious and dangerous side effects for a patient with a heart condition or who has hypertension. Knowing the difference between an anaphylactic reaction and, a, and just a localized allergic reaction could actually mean life and death if somebody is given epinephrine when they don't need it. Some patients are prescribed epinephrine, but they've never administered it to themselves or they've never actually administered it before. They may be unsure of how to use it or scared. When you get on scene, there's many times where a person's having an allergic reaction and they have not used their epinephrine auto injector at the point. Make sure you have your local protocols or offline or online medical direction for you to be able to assist with an epinephrine auto injector. In a severe anaphylactic patient, additional doses of epinephrine may be necessary. The epinephrine may run out and the allergen is still in the body. If the patient's condition deteriorates, you may need to give the additional dose. It may require bringing the patient's additional auto injector into the ambulance. You may also obtain a medical control for additional doses if you have epinephrine in the back of the ambulance. EMT administered epinephrine is for the non auto injector. This medication can be given by ALS providers or EMTs that have been given permission from their local protocols. They may administer the medication from a needle and syringe where they've drawn up the medication themselves.
whether it is the auto injector or the EMT administered epinephrine, the doses are the same. 0 0.3 milligrams or 0 0.3 milliliters for the adults, 0 0.15 milliliters or 0 0.15 milligrams for children. And that is if the concentration of epinephrine is one milligram per one milliliter. Depending on your service, some services are not able to afford the auto injectors and may have to use hypodermic needles and syringes where they actually have to draw up the medication and give it the uh, a intermuscul intramuscular needle. In summary, Allergic reactions are really common. Anaphylaxis, a true life-threatening allergic reaction, is definitely more rare. It is not as common as allergic reactions as people have allergic reactions to many minimal things, seasonal allergies, dusts, foods, irritants. The most common symptom in most cases of allergy is itching. Patients with anaphylaxis will also display life-threatening difficulty breathing and or signs and symptoms of shock or hypoperfusion. These patients will also be extremely anxious. Their bodies are in trouble and are letting the patient know it. If they are having the sense of impending doom, you must take this sense very seriously. The signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis results from vasodilation, where the blood pressure will drop, their blood vessels will dilate, bronchoconstriction, where their airways will start to tighten up and they may develop wheezes and difficulty breathing, leaky capillaries, where they may develop a flushed face, as well as edema in specific areas of their body, wherever their allergic reaction is, and thick mucus, which may make difficulty breathing increase. You must quickly recognize the difference between an allergic reaction and anaphylaxis. You may have to consult medical direction for administering the appropriate treatment. The allergic reaction is not an outside reaction. It is actually an internal reaction from an outside source. So it is not the outside that's causing the problem. The outside triggered a problem that is actually inside the body. Anaphylaxis is a severe and systemic form of this allergic reaction and is a life-threatening emergency. Remember that epinephrine is used in anaphylaxis to reverse the signs and symptoms of the anaphylactic reaction. It does not remove the allergic reaction overall. Epinephrine has potentially dangerous side effects, especially those with heart conditions and high blood pressure. It should be used only in the event of true anaphylaxis. So what are the indications for an administration of epinephrine autoinjector? What are some of the signs and symptoms that compare between an anaphylactic reaction and just a regular localized allergic reaction? What are some of the more common causes of an allergic reaction? Think of some of the foods that cause allergic reactions. Plants, animal, dander, saliva, insects, Think of the other things that can cause all sorts of exaggerated immune response reactions, also known as allergic reactions. What are some of the signs and symptoms of an anaphylactic reaction when it comes to the skin? Could include flushing, tingling sensation, hives. What about the respiratory system? This could include difficulty breathing, wheezing, and difficulty speaking. How does an anaphylactic reaction differ from a allergic reaction with the cardiovascular system? Many times it includes increased heart rate, hypotension, and pale skin. You have a 24 year old male who ate a meal that he believes contained shellfish. He has a known allergy to shrimp. He is sweating and nervous. He appears to be breathing adequately and you do not notice any wheezing or strider. What is your general impression? His face is slightly red. His pulse is 88 strong and regular. His respirations are 24. 
Blood pressure is 108 over 74. The skin is warm and moist. Should you administer epinephrine? Probably not yet, and definitely not until you contact medical control if that is required from your service. Although this patient is at high risk due to his known allergy, he does not have the signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis. He is breathing normally and no signs of shock are present. You should reassess frequently, consult medical control, gain access to the epinephrine, and do your five rights for when the time is necessary to give the epinephrine.